everybody and welcome back to Drawing with Paolo. Today we're going to draw a Star Destroyer and if you break it down into an, its individual pieces you can see that a Star Destroyer is mainly, mainly made up of a pyramid that is stretched out and it sort of looks, looks like a, uh, I would say a kite from above. And so here's the kite shape and there's a line here, a diagonal line, which is parallel to this line over here. See this line here is parallel to this one there. And then what we need to do once we've drawn this sort of kite shape all we need to do is add that thickness to it. So of course the Imperial Star Destroyer has a thickness to that. There are some uh, TIE Fighters that come out of its side and so we need to make that side here. Same flat front where it's flying forward and then we're gonna add a little bit of thickness at the bottom so that top kite piece well is repeated at the bottom of it so we need to retrace this line over here and attach it at the front just like that. And so these are the basic shapes to the Star Destroyer. Now we need to cut it down the middle to find the middle section of it because it is sort of bent, right? It's, it's at an angle and this little line down here will prove to us that that's the bent part. After that, what we need to do is design the bridge and all that stuff. So I mean, there's just like a little building that's set up on top of the uh, Star Destroyer here. So we're going to start with a little rectangle and we can still have the rectangle thickness on this side. There we go, a little bit better there and draw the line across. And there's a little bit of a bend there where the metal section of the ship is. Uh, it's sort of a bit as if you were to lay down a piece of paper on a, on a triangle. What would happen is it would fold a little bit. And that's what we're trying to do here in this rectangular shape. So I'm going to add a line at the back, put the thickness over here to that first block. Once this first block is drawn, everything else will go uh, much smoother. So let me add, you know, I'll make this a bit straight over here. And let's erase all this stuff. We don't need any of that anymore. Okay, then let's add the layer behind it, which is just another level, just like a multi-layered building on top of the Star Destroyer. And I think what uh, George Lucas had in mind and, and the artists, conceptual artists that were inventing this, essentially decided that they would reproduce a battleship, I suppose, a United States battleship or Canadian cruise ship or whatever else. Let's erase these lines. We don't need those anymore. And the bridge essentially is like the tower that's right in the middle of that ship that allows the captain and admirals to see uh, where they're going and where they're traveling and to guide and steer the ship. So that's sort of the same here. We need to make these sort of uh, rectangular pieces lay down one on top of another. And so here's that height of this one. They're all pretty much the same height, I would say. Each slab is the same height as one another. another. Pull the line down this way. And we can erase the stuff that's inside here. We don't need all this. All right. Okay, so we're going to keep building that up as we go on. And I think this will be the last row, so it's like three-story building here. That sort of looks like Inca pyramids, right? Or the Machu Picchu. If you pay attention to Inca pyramids, they are pyramids, but they're not, uh, they don't have a, a, uh, a slope that continues throughout like the Egyptian pyramid. In this case, they're really like stairs. Let's get rid of this line. We don't need that anymore. So they're just like Inca pyramids where there are stairs that bring you up all the way to the top, and every level is just a little bit smaller. And that's how I tend to see this ship. And then there's this little piece down the middle that has a thickness to it. And it's just another part that's added to that. We're going to put it in for detail here. A little bit of a thickness. And of course we got that sort of uh, column in the back that holds up this other diamond shape. So there's the column. And then on top of that, in front of it, there's like a big diamond shape or you can imagine a big screen uh, at a baseball game or a football game. It sort of looks like that. That's what I imagine it. And so it's a diamond shape, it's sort of elongated, right? More horizontal than high. And I think it's a little too high, so we're going to erase this. And just make it shorter. I think it's, I made it a bit too high. Yeah, this this will look better like this. Yeah, that's better. All right, so we're going to add the thickness again, the height of it. Just make that pyramid, that triangular shape, and bring it back down on this side. Then we're going to add the thickness to that. And when you're drawing the thickness, keep in mind that we have to keep that same diagonal as this line here, right? So same angle there. Because we're talking about perspective. When we have things in perspective, lines tend to follow each other. And we can draw the top just like this. 
All right, let's start adding detail. First detail, of course, is adding a little bit of a triangle at the front. This triangle is probably just for air dynamics, you know. Maybe it needs to fly through air, sort of like in episode two, and you can see all the Star Destroyers taken off. Well, they need to be aerodynamic as far as when they're in the air, but when they're in space, that doesn't really matter, as there is no air in space. Let's erase these lines, these little fine lines there. Get rid of that. Then what we want to do is put in these little globes here at the top. These little balls, uh, if I remember properly, they're what generate the uh, field. They're field generators, essentially, so they, they create the field, the protective field, the shields, if you like, around the ship. And then in one of the episodes, uh, you know, they try to blow up one of those uh, spheres there, and then because that explodes, well, they can actually attack the ship better, and they make it crash into, into the Death Star. So we're going to erase this little square here. We're drawing a side cube there, a sort of elongated one that detaches from the main building. All right, now we're going to add uh, the column in the center. It just goes beyond that pyramid shape. So we're going to add a little rectangle here at the top. And those globes, by the, by the way, are sort of uh, designed uh, with triangles in mind. There are sets of triangles that come together that make that globe. And we're going to give you... Uh, means of representing that. But first we're going to finish off a few of the, out the outlines here and then we're going to color some stuff in. So let's imagine this. So imagine that there's a star or a sun on the far right side of this spaceship and it's shining horizontally towards it. So it's not so much above, it's not so much below. It's pretty much even to the same uh, angle or same height as this ship. So it should illuminate only one side of it. So in this case, everything that's on the left side will be dark. And we're going to start adding a few details inside the face of this uh, shape here at the top. I'm guessing it's the bridge. It's where people make decisions and pilot this thing. This thing is monstrous. It is huge. So you need you know, good visibility when you're piloting it, and you probably need to be at the top. Yeah, I know, and there are probably computers doing that anyway. But just to say, you need to see. And so what I'm doing is I'm just drawing a bunch of shapes. And you can imagine what, um, to make this easier as far as drawing detail, imagine you're drawing a, a labyrinth inside that. Every one of those shapes that you're trying to create should resemble a, a labyrinth. And that's sort of what creates the detail inside this ship. Okay, so let's add more of those. And in other aspects, you can imagine that what I'm drawing are uh, the letter T and the letter E and the letter F and letter O, a square letter O, here's a letter I, for example, and a sideways F, and essentially that's all I'm doing to add detail here, is just drawing letters, or looks like letters anyway, and here we're going to color in the bottom part of this column, and fill that in nice and dark, because the underside here is really dark. The far left side will probably be a bit brighter, because we'll imagine that its uh, rockets are sort of lighting up that side, its engines. And the same thing here at the top. And we're going to even call, add a few details here. Because we're so far from the ship, then any little detail will make it look realistic. Little dots and lines and circles and rectangles. Let me do the outline here. By the way, you can notice that I'm not rotating. You may have noticed that I'm not rotating my sketch pad. And that's because I need to draw to the camera. Now, in your case at home, Please do rotate that page, rotate your drawing, uh, rotate your sketch pad so that you get more comfortable in drawing. In my case, I can't do that just because I really want it to be straight on when I'm drawing. But I wish sometimes that I could rotate that, doc that uh, sketch pad because it would make it much easier for me to draw. So guys at home, don't try to copy this. You don't have to make you know, your drawing flat and straight on. You guys can rotate that page, that paper, that sketch pad. Don't be shy to do so. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow here on this side. This is what this little triangular shape at the front is actually projecting some shadow on, on the front face of this level. And we're just going to shade the front just a little bit. And we'll do the same thing over here. We're going to leave a little bit of white there. Maybe some light's coming from this way and it's hitting the front of the ship. We're going to color this side because this color and that color should be the same. The color this may be a little bit darker. I want it to detach itself from the front uh, shadow color that we've used. Or Tone, anyway, not colors really. There are tones, grays. We'll do the top as well. It would be shadowed the top just because the tower is probably blocking the top there. So we'll make it nice and dark over here. 
and we'll color in the front just slightly. And for the sphere, of course, we need to make it sort of more rectangular, so a bit more, you know, hard edge. And we're going to color it in a spheral uh, fashion, so you can see it looks like a sphere because of the gradients. And we're going to add a few triangles inside that are to give the illusion that this whole sphere is actually built with triangular shapes. Okay, so there's a little trick. So from afar, it sort of looks like that's working out. This bottom color here, we need to apply that to this cylinder underneath the sphere. I'm just going to color that in. There you go. And the same thing for this one. So we're going to color that in immediately, and then we're going to color the sphere in a sphere uh, shading. All right, let's color that in like this. Slight gradient all the way. And then we'll add our little triangular shapes inside of, inside of that. There we go. All right, and we have the illusion that that sphere is composed of triangular shapes, triangular pieces. Now let's add more detail to this front face of our uh, the top part of the tower. And all I'm going to do is add lines inside here, darker ones, lighter ones, and individual shapes. Like I said, they can resemble letters, a side-facing letter F or a backward C or a letter E, or in this case, like a, a U. I hope you get what I mean. Or in other cases, what you can imagine drawing is a, is a uh, labyrinth inside all of this. And that's what it sort of looks like from afar. Keep your lines different colors, darker, lighter, and all that, and that way and it'll look more realistic in our drawing. So once again, this was a special request that was made a while ago. I'm catching up to those requests. I have a 30 or somewhat 30 or more drawings left to do to catch up my uh, drawing requests. And I think by the time I get to about 10 drawings remaining, I'm going to open up the uh, requests once more so that you guys will be able to ask for more drawings. I can only draw one a week, so thanks for your patience, everybody. Uh, I have a day job and uh, I have family, so I do this on my uh, spare time, which I seem to have less of these days. Okay, so for the ship, the main body part of the ship or the top here, roof, just has lines in there. You can imagine like this ship is sort of built like a tank, and tanks have overlayering uh, steel bits and pieces, and so this is what you sort of want to give the illusion that this ship is built in that manner, same fashion. Very tough uh, metal, I guess. And here we're going to draw that same detail that we did on the front of the ship. Even if it's in the shading, uh, we need to give some detail to it. And keep in mind that the lines that I'm drawing aren't always straight. That's because, you know, maybe this ship doesn't necessarily have straight lines. It has some overlayering uh, materials and some welding and whatnot. And so, uh, the lines shouldn't always be straight. You should have some little edges and nooks and crannies in there. Just like this. See what I mean? Just like that. It gives it more realism. I'm going to color in this side just to make it like the top level. And every one of those sides should have this kind of detailing in there. Keep in mind that there's shading on this side like this. And we're going to add a little bit of a shading in the front. And it's a little bit lighter on this side. Now, of course, the purists will say, Paolo, that doesn't really represent a uh, Star Destroyer. You're, you're not close to the reality of it or realism. Well, you know what? This is what I say. This is my drawing. So, yes, I'm calling it a Star Destroyer because it is based on the Star Destroyer. If you look at it, that's what you'd see, right? But this is my drawing, so I just want to draw it the way I want to draw it. And you guys at home will tend to stop drawing because someone told you that, you know, that drawing sucks or it isn't very good. And you know what? That discourages a lot of you, and I totally understand that, because when I was younger, I was discouraged too, once in a while, by a few of my teachers or, or friends, you know. But in this case, the trick here is not, never to stop. Why are we drawing? We are drawing because we're practicing our creativity, we are practicing our drawing skills, it allows us to get better, and we focus on something for a time, and that's something that's vital for our today's society, is being able to focus on one thing and doing that one thing right. Uh, everybody's always pushing multitasking and all this stuff. Well, you know what? Drawing is vital and very good for you as far as creativity goes and inventing things and putting it down on paper. So it doesn't really matter what, what people think about your drawing. Hey, this doesn't really look like Batman. Well, I don't care, man. It's my Batman, and I've taken that Batman character and drawn it the way I want to. And that's what you should do. It doesn't matter when you draw, where you draw, or what you draw, as long as you draw. And it doesn't matter what tools you use. 
just go ahead and draw and be that creative person that you are. I don't care what people tell you. That doesn't look like a horse. I don't care what you think it looks like. It's my horse. Now you can put a horse with four legs, six legs, 20 legs for all I care. That means you're creative and that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking to pass on to you guys. My passion for drawing and the will to just draw whatever you want. And so those that will say this is not really a Star Destroyer, well, you know what? That's fine. You can think that. That's cool. Uh, I, I appreciate your uh, and, and respect your comment, but in this case, you know, I'm just going to draw. I'm going to draw what I want to draw. And so this is my uh, Star Destroyer. Which, as I bring up that idea of the Star Destroyer, I'm sort of wondering where the cafeteria is in this place. <laughs> it's like, where's the cafeteria? I, I'm, I guess there are many cafeterias because there are so many uh, Imperial troops in there. They have to eat, right? So I'm wondering if there's like one at the top or if it's somewhere in the middle of the ship. Uh, I have no idea. So as I'm babbling along here, I'm just adding a few details left and right, just rectangles and squares and things, and uh, just to add some detail. And sort of like the uh, tree that I drew for uh, my leopard. Well, you know the, the bark of the tree? I just zigzag things to give it a, a feeling of the tree. Well, it's sort of the same thing here, but we're not drawing something that is as natural we're making it more uh, cubic as far as the shapes that are inside there. So straight lines, rectangles, squares um, that represent technology. Okay, so you don't want it as fluid a line. Well, not this ship anyway. Back in the day, uh, when these guys were invented back in the 70s, uh, our idea of futuristic stuff was pretty much straight lined and, and pure and whatnot. So. That's pretty cool. And it's evolved as, you know, you've seen Star Wars episodes come on. You've seen that the Naboo ships are much more sleeker and more fluid and very contrasting to these Imperial ships. All right, there are details here. You can Im imagine these as being buildings and all that. So that's the detailing I'm trying to apply here is like a, what would a building look like as far as some details with the brick and the glass and all that. So just drawing lines and that's pretty much it. All right, so we're going to color this little rectangular piece that's poking up, and we're going to add some detail on it first. Yeah, you know, a few lines here and there, and you got to imagine that this big tower is making a shadow on the deck there of the, of the Star Destroyer, so we're going to create a shadow here in a few minutes. Just going to add some detail here at the front side. All right. Cross hatching, a few zigzags and whatnot. Same thing over here. We're going to color this guy in real quickly. All right, that's looking pretty good. Sort of looks like a layered cake on top of the Star Destroyer. Okay, so here's my outline. I'm going to smooth this out. Add a little check here because this is where, you know, there are little checks in these ships. Probably where other ships can come and dock or maybe there are uh, gun bays in there. I'm not sure what. And uh, we're going to add the other side over here. And of course, if there are little ducts here on the side, then that means we have to uh, repeat that at the bottom too. So we're going to pull a line here, a thick line that needs to follow that gap. So here we go, all the way around. You can't see it here so much as we need to go back to the front. Pull it back here, go all the way across, stop, and start it up over here. Okay. And then. If you've got that check, you got to repeat it here at the bottom, right? So put the thickness and then pull the line across again, add the thickness and pull the line back. And you'll notice that now my thickness isn't as thick as I did it or originally. And you can see those light lines that are a bit thicker. I like it thinner. I want my ship to look much more massive in this sense. So we're going to erase all this stuff here with one swoop of the hand, whoop, like that. By the way, don't try this at home. Um, these techniques are really just, you know, uh, illusions. I can't erase with my hand. I really need an eraser, but it makes it more cool, you know. It's cooler. So we're going to color this whole side of the ship because the light is coming from the right side, and because there's a little bit of a bend in it, the ship is gray all on the left side. Okay, the light can't hit it there. And I'm going to darken this this uh, part of the uh, bridge, I suppose. And we're going to add a shadow line that's coming across this way, and there's maybe a little bit of a gap there. Then comes back, and then we're gonna color all that stuff in nice and dark, because that's what you know we want that shadow to look realistic. So we're gonna color that in much darker, and now you can really tell sort of where the light's coming from. It's coming from the right side. We color this portion of that thingy that's here as well. 
That detail is coming out nice. Pretty good. All right. Now we're going to add a few more details. So we're going to detail the, the, the top part of the ship. And what I intend on doing is drawing some squares and rectangles and things like that that are overlaid one on top of another uh, so that you can imagine like big hunk of steel plates put together and welded together on top of one another. And, and my imagination for this is take some playing cards and just let them drop on the floor and watch them how they layer on top of another, but make sure they're all straight because you don't want sideways cards. And so those cards can be redrawn on top of this ship, but of course with a thickness. So like this one here, you see that there's a little bit of a thickness to this big metal plate. When I say metal, maybe in the future, you know, they don't use metal. But then again, this was a, a long time ago in a galaxy far away. So it wasn't the future, it's the past. It is a long time ago in a galaxy far away. Their, their technology is more advanced than us, but if you believe in this stuff. <laughs> I'm talking about this as if it's real. Uh, you know, I was born and six years later I went to watch Star Wars at the movies, so that's how old I am. All right, so I'm going to draw a little bit of a nook here. And because that's sort of recessed there, it'll produce shadows. So there should be a little bit of a triangular piece right here. And then we'll add some shading underneath and to the front there. That'll add a little bit of a recess. Looks pretty cool. And then we're going to color the whole side of the ship here, which is nice and dark because it's in the shaded part. And we'll leave little doors there for TIE fighters to fly out of. TIE fighters and whatever other ship, the A wings and so on. Color that in. And then we're going to leave little lines here for the floor and all that. All right. So, by the way, the best place to find my drawings. Uh, is on my YouTube channel. So I have a lot of people saying, I can't find all of your episodes. I'm watching episode 67 here and I don't know where all the other episodes are. Well, if you want to find all my episodes, simply click on my name that is in blue next to one of my videos and it will bring you to my YouTube channel. And you'll be able to find all of my drawings there. And it's the best place to view my drawings because you only get my stuff. If you go about searching uh, me up in YouTube, you'll find my things too. But a lot of other stuff will appear and you'll most likely find the same videos over and over again, like the most watched ones and so on. But if you want to see all the videos, my Leopard, my Darth Maul, my Yoda, and my TIE Fighter and all that, well, go to my YouTube channel and you'll be able to find all of them there. All right, we're nearly done with this guy. So we're going to add a few more lines. Imagine that we've welded all these pieces together. So we're going to add a few more rectangles and squares and things like that, and some darker lines, some lighter lines. And we're going to do the bright side soon. We're just going to add a few more details back here. All right, so maybe a few more, let's say one of these things, like just longer lines, close to one another, sort of like that. Just add detail. We're just adding detail. It doesn't matter if it's real or correct or not, as long as it represents what we're looking at or what we're looking to reproduce. The right side, the bright side, will be just a whole bunch of dots and lines and things. Probably uh, laser cannons coming out of them and whatnot. And you know what? That's We need to reproduce our little uh, nooks here on this side. And add a few dots and lines and things like this too. It's really that simple. You don't need to go crazy with this. You can. Look, it, you know, it's your drawing. You do what you want to do to your drawing. This is what I want to do with mine. So I just want to add little dots and things like this on either side. All right. Make this a little bit darker. Add a few more, you know, details. And that's that, guys. We're going to color the front here and add a few more things to the front of this uh, Star Destroyer. But essentially, that's what I intended on doing today. So for those of you that wanted to uh, see how to draw a Star Destroyer, I hope this pleases you. I thank you once again for watching Drawing with Paolo. Uh, thanks for being a lot of uh, my fans. I appreciate it so much. I, these drawings are meant for you. So we're going to color this little part left. And... I'm going to wish you an awesome day. Thanks for watching. See you next time on another episode.